Hello guys, this is Avinash and in the previous session we were talking about the test ng and how to install test ng and how we can configure our Java project with the test ng jar. So in this session we are going to cover that how test ng actually works and what are different ingredients of the test ng. So for that we need to consider something over here. So let me quickly show you. Book. So let's consider that we have one Java class and its name is a.java and in this class we have written five test cases. Okay, there are five test cases in this a.java class. Likewise, we have written b.java class and this class also have five test cases in it. Okay five test cases in b.java as well. If we group all of these classes all together, then this group will be called as test. Okay, like smoke test, regression test or sanity test or maybe like that. And if we group multiple tests all together, okay, let's say test A, test B and so on, then this group is called as suite. Okay test suite so on the same fundamental test ng also works so test ng also considers a suite okay and under suite we may have multiple test okay and under each test we may have multiple java classes and under every java classes we have we may have test cases so test ng have one file that is testng.xml okay and this is the configuration file of testng so while execution of all these test cases testng reads this file testng.xml file and whatever written in this file will be executed so okay let's consider that i want to execute all test cases of class a then i have to mention name of class a in this testng.xml file. Let's say I want to execute all test cases from class B. Then I need to mention the name of class B in the testng.xml file. So this is how testng maintains the execution track and controls the execution through this testng.xml file. So let us quickly see that what is the structure of this testng.xml file. Okay. So the root, it is actually an extended markup language file. Okay, extended markup language file just like HTML where we have tags and data in it. So the root tag of testng.xml file is suite tag. Okay, suite tag. And under this suite tag, we may have multiple test tags. Okay, we may have multiple test tags. And under each test tag, we may have multiple classes tag okay multiple classes tags and under every classes tags we may have multiple class tags okay and under these class tags we have to mention name of java class which consists test cases okay for example in our case we have a dot java class which has five test cases in it okay then we have to specify name of this class in testng.xml file like class name is equals to let's say com dot e and slash so whereas where this com is nothing but a name of package in which class a is there okay and here is the name of class okay that's it this, this is how it is simple to mention the name of class which consists test cases so let us see that how test ng identifies that what is the test case and what is not the test case so for that test ng have set of annotations now what do you mean by annotations okay so annotations tells test ng that which java method is a test case 
and which Java method is a configuration method. So we have bunch of different annotations under test ng. So let us see what are they. Okay. So very first annotation we have in test ng is at the rate before suite. Okay. All these annotations can be written on the head of method or on the head of classes. Okay. Before suite can be written on the head of method. Okay. So consider that I have method public void m1. Okay. And if I write at the rate before suite, before suite, then this m1 method will execute before suite tag. Okay even before sweet tag likewise we have the second method that is at the rate after sweet okay this annotation can also be marked on the head of method okay so let's consider that i'm writing at the rate after sweet okay after sweet then obviously then this m1 method will execute just after the sweet tag ends Okay, the third annotation we have is, let me quickly erase this, sorry, okay, let me quickly erase it, okay, perfect, the next annotation that we have is, at the rate before test, okay, this annotation can be written on the, on the head of method, and method with this annotation will execute before execution of the test tag. So as we have seen the structure of testng.xml file that is suite. Okay, under suite we may have multiple, sorry, multiple test tags. So consider that my testng.xml file consists two test tags. Then method with this annotation will execute two times. Why? Because I have two test tags. Like this, we, we also have one more annotation that is after test. So method with this annotation will execute just after the execution of test tag. So uh, the method with at the rate after test annotation will also execute two times. Uh, just before just after finishing the first test tag and the second test tag next we have at the rate before class this annotation we can write on the head of method as well as on the head of class but there is a, a bit complex theory behind this before class tag okay I'll cover it later so like this we have at the rate after class tag sorry annotation then we have at the rate test annotation okay so this annotation can be written on the head of method or on the head of class so method who is having this annotation will be considered as test case and it will appear in the test ng report okay it will appear in the test ng report as maybe pass or maybe fail okay or maybe skipped skipped so these are the three states uh, states of the test case okay then we have at the rate before method at the rate before method and this can be written on the head of method again so method with this annotation okay method with this annotation will execute before every test case okay before every test case like this we have at the rate after method so method with this annotation will execute after every test case okay so these are the annotations basic annotations of test ng there are a few more annotations available in the test ng but i am not going to cover in this video so these are just the basic annotations now let us see how they actually work so let's go to eclipse and here i'll quickly delete all of this from here first okay 
this is the simple class that I have created and let us write a simple Java method in this class like public okay make sure that before applying any annotation you should mark your methods as public and not private okay at the rate before suite at the rate before suite and I'll simply write down a message over here before suite that's it simple method that I'm writing let us write one more method that is m2 and make it as public okay and then sys out and after suite okay and I'll mark a notation as after suite that's it so let's go here in the testng.xml file and I have mentioned the name of class over here like com.testingshastra.annotation test let's execute this file and observe the output can you see before suite executed first and then after suite executed we have no test cases in this class that is why total test run count is 0 failure is 0 and skips are 0 let us write down few more annotations that we have discussed so far okay let's write down the m3 method make it as public and here at the rate before test okay before test and I'll simply write down a message before test that's it also we will create one more method here and we will mark a notation after test okay after test let me write down the simple message after test that's it let's go in the testng.xml file and execute it testng.xml file we have executed can you see the messages before suite come and then before test and then after test and then after suite executed now we have only one test tag that is why this method executed only once okay so let us try and create multiple test tags over here in this testng.xml file make sure while creating multiple test tags okay the name of test tag should be different they should not be unique okay otherwise you will get a compile time error so let's execute this file right now and let's observe the result okay can you see over here before suite executed first before test executed after test executed and then before test executed again and after test executed and then after suite executed why because we have two test attack that is why these two methods executed two times okay so I'll quickly delete this then the next annotation annotation that we have is at the rate test at the rate test annotation so I'll create a m5 method or maybe maybe test case one method over here and I'll mark it as public okay and then let's write down a simple statement over here that is I am first test case that's it and let's execute it once again that's it before suite executed first before test then I am test case then after test and then after suite now let's have a look at at the rate before class annotation okay we haven't discussed it uh, while opening the video but we will ex explain uh, each and every aspect of at the rate before class annotation over here so listen carefully because it may uh, sound a bit confusing but I'll try to simplify it okay so let's say that I have m5 method over here and it is public method and I'm writing at the rate before class annotation to it okay and I'll simply 
write down sysout over here and then before class okay likewise i am creating m6 method and again it is a public method okay and at the rate after class annotation okay let's write down a print statement and after class that's it pretty easy now let's try and executing this testng.xml file let's run it and observe it first before suite executed then before test executed and then before class executed then test case executed and then after class executed now you may feel that before class is executing before the class tag okay but this is not the case before class annotation executes it executes before execution of the test case okay it, it executes before the execution of the test cases okay test cases of the class where where it is written okay so let's consider that before class annotated method m5 is written inside class annotation test okay then before class will only execute if my class is having at least one test case if my class is not having any test cases then before class will not execute okay let's try to remove this test case and let's observe what happens now my class doesn't have any test case and let us try to execute the test xml right now Can you see before class didn't, didn't execute it over here? Why? Because there are two rules for the before class. The first rule, okay? I'll quickly write down the rule. The first rule, it will execute for the class where it is written, okay? And the second rule, second rule that we have is at least, at least one test case should be present present in that class okay for example let's consider that so let me quickly create new drawing okay let's consider that i have this class a dot java okay and in this class i have written at the rate before class annotated method that is public void m5 okay and i have b dot java class and in this class i have maybe m1 method okay and its annotation is at the rate test now let's consider that i have testng.xml file testng.xml file and i have mentioned a and b in this file okay so if i execute this testng.xml file then before class will not execute why because a class doesn't have any test case okay and here also it will not execute because they are two different classes altogether so make sure that to execute before class your class must have at least one test case okay this is the prerequisite and the name of class should be present in the testng.xml file okay sometimes this may happen that you may create a structure like this public class a extends b okay in this case what is happening b is parent of class a now these test cases have been passed to the a class as per the rule of inheritance in java okay now my a class is having one test case okay in this case if i mention a and b under testng.xml then obviously i can see before class is executed successfully okay so you can try these annotation at your own level i am not writing a program right now because we are going to cover them in depth in the coming session so this is all about the before class and after class so let us try writing down the before method and after method so i'll simply create m7 
and I'll mark it public and then again at the right before method okay and I'll write down a message over here say sound before method okay I'll create one more method that is a mate and I'll mark it as public at the rate after method okay so let's import it and let's then write down the print statement after method that's it pretty simple now let's try to execute this file and let's observe what happens can you see after method also didn't execute it why because our class doesn't have any test case why because we have commented this test case okay let's uncomment it now execute it and let's observe now before class will also execute and before method will also execute okay can you see before class executed first and then before method executed now let's see that my class is having only one test case so let us try writing one more test case over here maybe test case 2 and let's make it public and at the right test okay and then I'll write a message I am second test case pretty simple then go to testng.xml file and run it and let's observe the output before suite before test before class and before method then I am first test case and then after method okay can you see this sandwich structure over here and then before method executed one more time and then second test case executed and then after method executed one more time so this is the second sandwich that is that have been prepared and at last after class executed and then after test executed and then after suite executed so this is the sequence of execution of these configuration methods as well as the test cases so why java have given this kind of annotations to us so java just wanted to sorry testng just wanted to clarify that this is a test case and this is not a test case so to uh, differentiate between these uh, phenomena testng have provided at the right test annotation so that we can mark any method as a test case so let's consider that before executing bunch of database test cases or maybe uh, test cases which are testing the database okay before executing all those test cases i need to connect to the database first okay so this is the kind of configuration that i want to make before execution of my test cases so this kind of configuration we can write in a at the rate before suite method or maybe at the rate before test method so i will simply go here in the before test method and i can write code to connect to database so that before execution of all of the test cases database connection will be successfully created and once all the test cases have been finished execution then i can write code to close database connection so that is why testng have given several different annotations to us so this may happen that before executing bunch of test cases from single class okay we want to open a browser so in that case we can write a code to open browser in before class okay code to open browser and once all test cases of this class have been executed successfully we will close the browser in after class so that is the beauty of having these annotations i hope you got the idea of all of these annotations we are going to discuss them practically in the coming sessions so thank you for now if you like the video please comment and share with your friends thank you